Hello. Hope everything is uh, is well, doing very well, and uh, ready to finish this course. So uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to later, I'm going to uh, post a final review for you. The final review would be mostly uh, cover the, okay, the, the later part of the course, okay. So it's going to be mostly probably test, uh, a test three that uh, we did, okay. And, uh, and the quiz four, and a couple of more questions from these new topics that we have. Okay, I post that. So the final is going to be on on Wednesday. Uh, okay, and Wednesday. I think this is going to be Wednesday. Uh, Too many. Okay, Wednesday twenty six. At uh, the time that we did the other one, uh, six uh, to nine. Uh, okay, so we as usual we meet on Zoom and we give you we give you the test okay there are going to be a couple of more questions but uh, we give you enough time to be able to be able to do it so uh, this is going to be i try to give you the last part that we need to know uh, it's it's very important to get to know a little bit more about the inner product space that i'll talk about the other night uh, especially the process of when we talk about inner product we define how two, two vectors can be orthogonal. And this orthogonality is very important in the in a product space. And uh, you know that if in a vector space you have a nice uh, basis, that would be very useful. So we are going to have something, we call it orthonormal uh, basis for a vector space, which is the foundation of the in a product space, especially for infinite dimensional. Okay, so I try to give you everything we need there tonight or just a little bit then uh, i post that uh, uh, okay the review then uh, i post the solution for you then if you need it i'll give you a couple of more, more recording just uh, to to cover it so if you have any question when i post it especially that last part just uh, let me know i will send a couple of uh, problems but uh, you are not uh, we are not going to collect any more assignment, but make sure to do it for, you know, uh, to prepare you for the final. If there is going to be a good one, I put it into the final review so that we are not going to miss it, okay? So what we're going to do good tonight is a very interesting concept, really, that uh, uh, we want to know if you give it a vector space, your vector space is finite dimensional. Uh, you know that you already talked about the base. When we say dimension is N, means uh, there is a basis. There is a basis with n vectors in this, uh, okay, in this uh, vector space. But we would like to get a basis uh, so that the, the vectors in that vector space are going to be orthogonal. For the orthogonality, the vector space is not enough, of course. You need to have an inner product, okay? So we're going to inner product space. So let's go back and see what we did with the inner product just to create a norm and then uh, eventually we are going to show you that if any product space is given to you, you can nicely find a basis in which every two vectors are going to be orthogonal, which is very good one. And most of the application of the linear algebra would be depends on this, uh, this phenomena. Okay, it's not difficult to have to be patient for some of the, some of the problems. Okay, so uh, this is going to be just a, a brief uh, description of these two sections, whatever we need. So I just uh, remind you that what we did, okay? I remind you that uh, if you have a, these are just a review of the, uh, the dot product space, but we need it and to just make sure you know, you remember it. So we just uh, recall that, okay, recall that if, uh, if let's say V is going to be now an inner product space, inner product space is a vector space plus that inner product. Okay, it's going to be an inner product space with, and let's say, uh, that's going to be the one, of course, as an inner product. Okay, uh, then, uh, what we talk about, we can define the norm, remember, 
uh, we can define uh, then for for vectors for each vector each vector okay each vector uh, let's say v in v or u v in uh, v in uh, okay in v uh, we have we can define the norm of the v okay remember the norm of the v is going to be the the inner product v dot okay in a product of v and v but uh, this would be this would be to the to the one half if you like okay or if you like the square root of uh, v times v dot dot we call it v dot v is the inner product of the v and the v and the v remember this is a positive number so we can take the square root so we define the norm in particular if Okay, if the norm of the V happen to be equal to the one, then V is going to be, okay, it's going to be a unit vector. It's going to be a unit vector, vector in V. And you know that it's easy to, uh, to form a unit vector. So if any vectors is given to you, then you can, you know, you can make it into the, uh, it's not going to be difficult to make it into the, into the unit vector okay and so uh, this is it now uh, then uh, we can uh, we can prove uh, as we did it before okay i'll just write it down as a theorem whatever we did it before we can prove it for the norm again i'll talk about the other night that this norm of the inner product that we're going to have the first part is going to be the norm of the v is going to be then equal to the zero okay for uh, for all a vector v in v okay and the same thing norm of the v is equal to the zero if and only if v is going to be a zero vector and the other procedure that we did all of them can be can be proved that the norm of the scalar something like k times v is going to be the absolute value of k times the norm of the v okay this is k is a real number is a, a scalar okay and uh, the other procedure especially remember the uh, we talk about the cauchy schwartz so the cauchy schwartz can be also proved here very similar to the, what we did it's going to be absolute value of a uh, of the inner product of two vectors like u and the v okay this is going to be less than equal to the norm of u times the norm of v be ready for it as we did it before we may give you a couple of vectors and a special inner product and ask you to confirm it okay so this is cauchy schwartz or cbs inequality that we did uh, we did before similarly it can be proved we are not going to ask you to prove it because we already proved this in a special case so that's going to be cauchy schwartz and you know that we use the cauchy schwartz uh, to prove the uh, okay uh, to prove the triangle inequality is the same thing so triangle inequality can be proved again so this is going to be norm of u plus v is norm u plus norm v okay this is going to be the one uh, even even the remember the the program identity can be proved here so the norm of x plus y squared or u plus v uh, okay uh, squared plus norm of the u minus v squared is going to be equal to the twice of the norm of the u and the twice of the norm of the v the proof are very similar to the what we did before again we are not going to ask you to prove it we may ask you to verify it with the special norm or the inner product that we define over here so as you can see, these are all the properties that we usually have for Rn, uh, n-dimensional Euclidean space, but it can be easily, uh, okay, extended to the to the inner product space. And with this norm that we define over here, so each vector space, each, okay, each inner product space, product space, with the with the norm 
that is defined. That is defined. Okay, that's defined by the by the inner product. By the inner product. Okay, is going to be called. Is called a normed space. A normed space. They are very important. You know, when you bring the norm, you can bring a topology, so called. You know, like the sequences to be convergent, talk about the limits, everything can be can be generalized from calculus or from topology, we call it, into the uh, norm space, okay? So we call it a norm space because we can define a norm in it. But this norm is going to be in a product space. There are quite a lot to talk about this one, but I just want to, to just remind you. Okay, so uh, be prepared for it. Uh, we may give you some uh, special in a product space and we ask you to, to verify one of these for us. Okay, now what else can be extend from the Euclidean space to this new one? The things that we are going to be interested to a space to, to generalize is the notion of the orthogonality. Remember we define the, we define the angle between two vectors in the n-dimensional spaces and that enable us to define where two vectors are going to be orthogonal. In a Rn, the two vectors were orthogonal if their inner product was equal to zero, dot product equal to zero. But we have the inner product, so that's it. We can define. So we get the definition. Okay, so the definition is going to be uh, two vectors. It's the same as before. Two vectors in, uh, okay, in the inner product, in an inner product. Okay, in a product space uh, V. Okay, let's say two vectors uh, U and V. Okay, U and V. Let's say two vectors U. I'm sorry, U and V. Okay, in the uh, inner product space V are going to be our orthogonal or perpendicular. Okay, are going to be orthogonal if uh, if the inner product is going to be equal to the zero. You see, u dot v to be equal to the equal to the zero. So it uh, we we already talked about this. So over here we can uh, we can also have this. Uh, okay, we can also have these uh, vectors to be uh, to be orthogonal. Okay, so two vectors can be orthogonal if and only if the dot product or just the inner product they are going to be equal to the equal to the zero. Now, uh, what we can do is we can define. This is just uh, talking about two vectors. Now we can define an uh, orthogonal set. Okay, what's going to be orthogonal set? A collection of vectors would form an orthogonal set for the vector space uh, inner product space V if uh, any two vectors in that set are going to be, uh, okay, orthogonal. Okay, so we extended a little bit at the vectors. Okay, the vectors, uh, a collection of vectors, let's say V1, V2, up to the Vn. Okay, uh, these the vectors in V is going to be is going to be called, okay, it's called an orthogonal set. Okay, it's going to be called orthogonal set if each of, each pair of these vectors are going to be orthogonal. Okay, so if the product of the, let's say, vi and the vj would be equal to the zero, or i not equal to the j, okay, and i, j are equal to the one, two, three to the n. Okay, so a set of vectors are going to be called orthogonal set. If every two, every two distinct vectors are going to be orthogonal to, to each other. Okay, and besides, if the, these vectors are going to be unit vectors, okay, if these vectors are going to be unit vectors, in that case, we are going to have so-called 
orthonormal set, orthonormal set, okay? So, and this is going to be uh, if, okay, so that's going to be the one that uh, also, if we have the fact that this uh, norm of the V1 equal to the norm of the V2 up to the norm of the Vn happen to be equal to the one, then that set of vectors V1, V2 up to the Vn is going to be called, okay, this is going to be called an orthonormal. Okay, that's going to be orthonormal, orthonormal set. Okay, so we call it orthonormal sets if these vectors, you know, they are going to be uh, unit vectors over there, okay? Uh, ortho or the normal set. Our aim target is if you give me a vector in a product space, I give you one of these as a orthonormal basis, not just a, a set. Okay, so your job is we may give you one and we ask you to, to check it, okay? You know that you can have different so the obvious one, you see obvious one is, uh, you know that, for example, if you want to go with the standard one, uh, it's clear that if, uh, if uh, this vector space, if V is equal to the Rn, okay, with the standard, with the standard, Okay, with the standard basis, basis S. Okay, remember, this is S is equal to the E1, E2, En. Okay, and this is going to be the case, then S is going to be, S is going to be an orthonormal, orthonormal, normal set. No, because you know that every inner product, just the inner product is going to be dot product. So EI and EJ is just the dot product. And you know that the dot product of this is going to be equal to zero. And of course they are all unit, unit vectors. Okay, so this is going to be the standard one. If you want to have something which is going to be a little bit different, okay. Uh, so suppose uh, we give you one of these uh, different one. So uh, suppose your vector space is uh, going to be, okay, V uh, is uh, going to be, uh, is going to be V, suppose V is, is the, is an inner product, inner product, Okay, in a product a space. Okay, consists of vectors, consists of vectors. Okay, uh, vectors, uh, uh, this is it, V1, V2, V3. In R3, okay, in R3 it was a weighted product Remember we talked about the other night, and this is going to be weighted, weighted product. Remember you're just multiplying. It's like the inner product, but it's going to be coefficients. So this is it, the U, inner product of U and the V is going to be, you know, the usual one is U1, V1 plus U2, V2 and U3, V3. That's, you can have any number. So it's a 2u1 v1 plus, uh, okay, plus a 3u2 v2 plus uh, a u3 v3. We know that this is going to be an inner product. Okay, so this is uh, given to you. Then you may be asked to show that, okay, you want to show that uh, this uh, set a set of the vectors, and the vectors are going to be, uh, 
and this is it. The vectors are four, five, one, and the other one is a negative three. Okay, negative three, two, six, and the, the third one is a 16. Okay, 16 and negative seven, negative seven and negative 23. Negative uh, 23, we, we want to just show that this form, okay, this form and uh, orthonormal set, ortho, orthogonal, orthogonal set, okay? To, to prove it's orthogonal, you just uh, have to prove that with this dot product, with this inner product, their product of each one of them happen to be equal to the equal to the zero. Okay, so you have to prove that they are orthogonal. They are going to be orthogonal. So we check solution. Let's call it a V1, a V2, V3. So quickly, you know, I check. I just show you a couple of them. So you have to check what's going to be V1 and V2. Okay, V1 and the V2, according to the definition, is going to be two times, okay, two times, uh, this is C, U1, V1, is going to be two times four times negative three. Then you have plus three, plus three, U2, V2. Okay, and plus, uh, plus it is going to be, Okay, one and 16, one, and, because this is gonna be U3, V3, U3, and uh, okay, U3, V3 is gonna be one and six, yes, that's gonna be, just check, three, two, this is a negative six. This is a negative six, so this is going to be one times a negative, negative six. Okay, if you put them together, so that give you what? This is going to be negative 24, negative 24, 10, which is going to be 30, and this last one is six, so this is going to be equal to the zero. Okay, and easily can be seen that the other one is going to be the same thing, okay? So the V1 and the V3, if you would check this one, and that give you two times, uh, four times, uh, uh, 16, and the other one is going to be three times five times a negative seven, negative seven, and we have the one times negative 23. This would be zero two, okay? And the last one is the same. So you have to show it if it's going to be on the, on the test. Okay, so uh, there you are, those vectors uh, two by two are orthogonal, so the conclusion is going to be that the V1, V2, and V3 is going to be is an okay orthogonal orthogonal set orthogonal set because this is a, a, a case. Okay, so if you like a little bit calculus, just give me one so that you see that. A different example, uh, how it's going to be, looks like if you like. Uh, so the, the example from calculus that we have, remember, we have a polynomials or we have just uh, the function, continuous function or integrable function. So the example that I have is uh, going to be, uh, suppose, suppose V is equal to the I'm going to consider continuous function a bit on the closed interval of a negative pi and pi. Okay, you know that this is going to be a, is a, a, is a, is going to be the inner product, inner product, inner product space, okay, of continuous function of continuous, they're going to be continuous functions, uh, continuous function on a closed interval of a negative pi and pi. Okay, negative pi and pi uh, with respect to the these, okay, with respect 
to the inner product, as we talked about the other night, okay, the inner product, inner product, the inner product is uh, the product of f and g as two function, is going to be equal to the one over pi, integral from negative pi to pi, f of x times g of x, and d of x. Okay, this is easily, or can be proved, or we did prove it, that it's in a product, okay, in a product. So what we'd like to do is we'd like to do in this situation, we wanted to show that, show that these sets of vectors are one. Okay, set of uh, one cosine, cosine x and sine x. Okay, and sine x is uh, orthogonal, is orthogonal set, okay? Uh, so this is and uh, orthogonal, it's an orthogonal, orthogonal set, okay? Again, uh, what uh, we are going to do is, uh, we just uh, prove that we have to prove they are going to be, they are going to be orthogonal. Okay, three vectors. So the solution is going to be, this is your inner product. So for example, what is the product of one and cosine X? You have to prove that this is equal to the zero. So according to the definition is going to be one over pi. Okay, one over pi integral from negative pi to pi the product of two function, the product would be cosine, okay? It's a one times a cosine of x dx. You know that the integral of a cosine is gonna be just sine. So it's gonna be one over pi of the, the sine x from a negative pi to pi. You know that the sine of the pi is zero. So in both cases, this is going to be, this is zero and just write it down so that you know, what does it mean? It's a sine of the pi minus the sine of the negative pi. And you know that sine of the pi and the negative pi is zero. So these two, one and cosine of x are going to be orthogonal. Okay, and the other one is the same. So uh, similarly, you get one and the sine is uh, similar, it's going to be equal to the zero. Okay, uh, the other one, it takes a little bit more to prove that this is uh, cosine and sine, cosine x, uh, sine x. So the inner product is going to be one over pi, integral from negative pi to pi. Okay, negative pi to pi, the product, cosine of x times uh, sine of x, uh, dx. Okay, this is going to be your uh, your dx, you know that different way to integrate this one, uh, you can write it on um, u, u prime if you like uh, to get it, uh, okay, or just change it to the, you know, double angle, it, it's the same thing. So if you want to change it to double angle, it's gonna be one over pi. You know that two sine x cosine x is the sine of two x. So we can write it down as uh, integral of negative pi to pi one half of the sine of the two x, two x dx. Okay, and uh, quickly, this is going to be, uh, it's a one over pi. Okay, and you get a one half, and that give you a cosine of, or the negative cosine, negative cosine of the two x over two again. And to be evaluated from negative pi to, two pi, okay? And uh, if you put them together, that uh, give you two times two, four. So it's a negative one over four pi. Okay, uh, one over four pi. And if you substitute, that give you the result right away. Okay, that give you cosine of the cosine of the two pi. Okay, which is equal to the one minus cosine of the two pi so that gives you zero too, okay? 
So uh, this is it. So the cosine x and the sine x as a vector, they are going to be, okay? They are going to be orthogonal. So that give you the fact that they are going to be very useful in future, okay? So that's it, one cosine x, uh, sine x is going to be, is an orthogonal. Okay, it's going to be orthogonal, orthogonal set. Okay, so this is, uh, this is uh, the, the one that we are going to, we are going to have. Now, what we are going to be interested in, as I told you, is that, uh, you know, I have a various uh, example of this. Let's just give you another one. Uh, because I didn't give you anything with the orthonormal, okay, for the orthonormal set. So, uh, what uh, we are going to do, let me give you one example of the orthonormal one. This is, uh, okay, that's going to be number, number three. Let's have the number, number four over here. Okay. Okay, we are going to continue. Uh, so, uh, give you example of the orthogonal set. Let's uh, orthogonal one. Sorry, let's go to. Notebook. Okay, so uh, what we did uh, so far, we give you a set in which each vector, okay, the vectors are gonna be uh, two by two orthogonal, if you like. So we talk about it, if we get uh, a set with the unit vectors, we are going to have a orthonormal, orthonormal sets. Okay, so let's get another one. And these are the one that we're going to use, orthonormal one. Uh, the extra condition is that uh, you have the unit vectors. And you know that we, we, we can normalize the vectors to get the unit vectors all the time. Uh, so this example is uh, this one. We're going to use it uh, in some other places. So that's a number four. Number four, we want to show that. Okay, you get a couple of them in the in the final the final exam. Okay, show that the, the set. Okay, these uh, sets uh, are going to be, okay, the set, uh, let's uh, call it S equal to the V1, V2, V3. Okay, it, this is uh, going to be the vectors R, one over radical two comma one over radical two and uh, zero. Okay, that's the first vector. And the second vector is negative radical two over six. Okay, radical two over six. Okay, radical two over six, radical two over six, and uh, two radical two, two radical two over three. Okay, and the third vector is Third vector is a two thirds. Okay, two thirds, negative two thirds, and the one thirds. Okay, we want to show that this set is going to be an orthonormal basis. Is an the basis is going to be the one we talk about later. Ortho orthonormal. Okay, orthonormal sets in. Okay, let's say in V equal to the R3. You know that R3, the dimension is three, so automatically this would be a, a basis. And so uh, what we are going to do is we have to prove that they are going to be in R3 with the standard one, it is start with the S, so the standard one means the inner product is going to be just the, the dot product, the usual 
the art product that we have. Okay, the so solution is going to be, uh, so we are going to consider uh, V1, for example, that V2. Okay, this is going to be just the usual, usual dot product in this case. So it's going to be V1 dot V2. And you know that you multiply these two by two to get these numbers. So the V1 and the V2, when you multiply these two together, that give you, let me write it down, the first one is a radical two times, okay, radical two times a negative radical two, a six. This is going to be the first one. And the plus one is going to be one over radical two. The second component is going to be radical two over six. And the third one is a zero, okay? Third one in zero, so this is going to be equal to the, uh, we simplified negative one six, and this is going to be a one six, so the result would be zero. So this means V1 and the V2 are going to be orthogonal, and we check the other one is going to be the same thing, you know, V1 and the, and the V3. If you check the V1 and the V3, so the result is going to be, when you multiply it, so that give you two over three radical two minus two over three radical two plus zero, which is going to be zero. And the other one is the same thing, you know, V2 and the V3. If you multiply them together, that give a negative radical two over nine minus a radical two over nine again, and the two radical two over nine. It's going to be zero, okay? So they are orthogonal, and you consider the norm, V1, V2, to see if they are going to be orthonormal, okay? So the V1 and the V1, if you consider the V1 and the V1 uh, is going to be one over radical two squared plus one over radical two squared, Okay, plus zero, so that give you one half plus one half, which is equal to one. Okay, so this means the norm of the V1 is equal to one. And similarly, we can check the others, okay? So the V2 and the V2, for example, is going to be V2 times V2. Uh, so that give you the numbers when you multiply them together, that give you 236 component and the 236, and the other one is gonna be eight, nine. So it's equal to one. And so the norm of the V2 is equal to one, and similarly, the other one, okay? So the V3 and the V3 is also equal to one. So this means V1, V2, V3, okay, V1, V2, and V3 is going to be an orthonormal Okay, orthonormal, orthonormal set for the, for this vector space that we, we have over here. Okay, so you can have, you know, various, uh, various examples to, to get uh, these numbers. For the other one, you need a little, little bit of calculus, you know, for, for some of them. But you are going to get to more, more example in a, in a minute. So if you go through the examples that we have, in your uh, in your book so you got to be patient and some of them you have to do it for us and we are going to check it on the okay on the other final final review now uh, what is uh, going to be the the target as i told you we would like uh, so what we would like to do is uh, if a okay if a vector space is given to you so we would like to form, okay, to form a, a basis. Okay, form a basis for this vector space. Basis is going to be a collection of vectors. And we want these vectors to be unit vectors. And then what else we want? We want these vectors two by two to be uh, orthogonal. So in that case, we are interested in an orthonormal, orthonormal set, okay? Now, in order to get to that one, we need a, a, to do, to build up a couple of uh, cases. 
Uh, so the first thing to do is uh, going to be what's going to be the property of these uh, vectors when you bring this uh, nor orthogonality, okay? So uh, if you have an orthogonal set, a set in which the vectors are going to be uh, two by two orthogonal, we can prove that this set is linearly independent. And you know that linear independent set can uh, form a basis for us. So that's a very good result. Very good result. So what's going to be the theorem? The theorem that we have is uh, simply will tell you that orthonormal, okay, or orthogonal, okay, orthogonal sets, orthogonal sets are going to be linearly, uh, linearly independent. If you continue studying courses in linear algebra or math major or in physics, this inner product space would be changed into so-called Hilbert space. And for the Hilbert spaces, these orthonormal spaces are, are trivial and very important. And you got to know it for various, various spaces. Okay, so if you have orthogonal uh, sets, in that set's gonna be linear independent. It's very easy to prove. I can show you how we're going to prove it, okay? So this basically means that if, okay, this means if V1, V2 up to the Vn, okay, is going to be, is an orthogonal, okay, orthogonal set in an inner product, in the inner product, inner product, okay, a space V, then this set is going to be linear independent, okay? So then the vectors, the vectors are linearly, okay, linearly independent. You know what to prove for the linearly independent, the proof is easily, so the proof, and you know that suppose uh, you have to get those uh, collection of the linear combination of those. So suppose C1 V1 plus C2 V2 up to the Cn Vn is equal to the zero. Okay, is equal to the zero as usual where C1 C2 to the Cn are going to be scalars, okay? If this is going to be the case, uh, so what we would like to do is, would like to prove that all these C1 up to the Cn are going to be equal to the equal to the zero. Okay, so what you can do is, this is a very nice uh, trick. Uh, so uh, if you multiply this, this linear combination, it's going to be just a vector. Okay, what we are going to do is, we are going to multiply it in the inner product. Multiply by V1, V2, V3 to the Vn. Each, you know that the vector is going to be orthogonal. So this, this product is equal to the zero, but the product would be, if you multiply by V1, it would be C1, then C2, C3, etc. It's very popular, popular method that we use. Okay, if this is going to be the case, then look at this one. Then if you multiply this vector, okay, if you multiply C1, V1 plus C2, V2 up to the Cn, Vn, if you multiply by V1 in the inner product, you see if this is going to be the case. You see, if you multiply, you know that you can extend these. So this is going to be what? This is going to be equal to the C1, V1, V1, and you just continue. C2, V2, V1, okay, C3, V3, V1, and just continue to get to the Cn, Vn, and V1. And you know that this is, and this is, it's equal to the zero. Okay, because we have the zero here. Okay, because this is all zero. So this is going to be equal to the zero to start with. Okay, so because you know that this is a zero, zero times V1, which is equal to the zero. But look at this one. 
you say C of V1, D, D, just other than the first one, okay, anything else is equal to the zero. Remember, because these vectors are orthogonal. Are all orthogonal except except the, the first one. Except uh, the first one, but what is gonna be the first one? So uh, what you have uh, over here is, and so we get the fact that the C1, the V1 and the V1 is equal to the zero. But remember V1, uh, so that give you what? That give you C1 and the norm of the V1 is equal to the zero. So the V1 is not zero because it's a non-zero vector. So that give it the fact that the C1 is equal to the is equal to the zero. Okay, you can do the same one for the for the other ones. So you can do the same one. So similarly, okay. And similarly, what you have if you just multiply by, if you have a C1 a V1 up to the C2 V2, okay, and uh, uh, let's say C N V N. And uh, one of these vectors, doesn't matter which one is it. Let's call it uh, VI. You see, this would be equal to the zero. And if you expand this one over here, the only non-zero one is going to be CI, VI comma VI equal to the zero. So that gives you CI equal to the zero for I equal to the one, two, three up to the end. Okay, so this means, therefore, Okay, therefore those vectors, uh, vectors uh, one, V1, V2, up to the Vn are going to be linearly, okay, linearly independent. Quite nice and nice result. And this trick is very popular Then you multiply to reduce those, uh, those numbers. Okay, so uh, what's the conclusion? The conclusion is going to be, for example, if you consider this in Rn, the dimension of the Rn is n. So if you have any sets of uh, orthogonal sets of n vectors, that would give you a basis in Rn right away. Okay, so that's a bonus. So the bonus is going to be plurally, okay. You know, in practice, in your space, it's going to be a finite dimensional. If uh, V it can be Rn or anything else is, uh, okay, is going to be a, an inner, okay, inner product space. Okay, inner product space with the dimension of N, dimension of V equal to the N, then any, Okay, any what? Any orthogonal, any orthogonal set of n vectors, okay, n vectors is a basis. Okay, very nice one. It's a basis because as soon as we get the orthogonal set, according to this theorem, that those vectors are going to be linear independent, so we get a vector right away. Okay, and that would be useful in some uh, proving some uh, theorem as we did it before. You see, look at this one. So we can use it if you have a set of the vectors and you want to prove that the sets are going to be a basis. You can prove that they, those sets are going to be orthogonal sets. So one application is this one. Example, suppose you've been asked to show that Okay, you've been asked uh, to show that the following set. Okay, the following set. Show that the following set is a basis. Is going to be a basis in, okay, a basis for uh, R4, which is a usual, usual product. Okay, and this is the set. And the vectors R2, three, two, negative two. Okay, and then you have one, zero, zero, one. And then you have a negative one, zero, two, 
one, and then you have a negative one, two, negative one, and one. You see a set of four vectors, and you want to prove that and this is going to be a basis. You know that you have to prove that they are linearly independent. To prove it's linearly independent, according to the previous theorem, you need only to prove that what they are uh, two by two orthogonal, or it's an orthogonal set. Okay, so you may call them uh, V1, V2, V3, and V4, and quickly check that they are orthogonal. Okay, so I check a couple of them for you. So you have to check the V1 uh, times the product of the V1 and the V2 is the usual product. Okay, it's a dot product. So it's going to be a dot product. So if you multiply these together, so what's going to be the result? It's going to be two times one, two times one, three times zero. Okay, two times a zero. And you have a negative two times one. So as you can see, this is going to be two plus zero plus zero minus two, which is zero. So the V1 and V2 is a zero. You know that this means V1 is orthogonal to the V2. And then, you know, the others are going to be the same. You know, just check one more for you. Just the V1 and the V3. V1 and the V3 is going to be two times negative one. The second one is zero. Uh, okay, and the two times uh, two, and uh, the negative two times uh, one. So that gives you a negative two for negative two, which is zero. Okay, so simply you can prove the other one is going to be also, uh, also zero. Okay, so uh, this is it. You know, we can prove that the V2, the V2, V3 is equal to the V2, V4, and then you know etc all of them are going to be eventually v3 and the v4 are all zero okay are going to be all zero so it's a okay so it is a it is an ortho orthogonal set orthogonal set and so is a basis okay it's going to be a basis a basis for for R4. Okay, so this is going to be a kind of uh, application of these uh, type of ideas. Uh, you are going to have various application of this uh, quantity that uh, we can uh, we can have. Okay, I want to get to that uh, that part first. Then I give you more of uh, these uh, type of examples. Okay, in a minute. But uh, that gives us some, uh, some idea of uh, what we are going to get to eventually to get that uh, procedure that we are going to be interested in. Now, uh, this method that we did to prove that they are, uh, okay, the way you know I prove from the orthogonality to the normality, I give you a nice uh, method in order to you see when we write a vector is a linear combination of the of the basis vector. Remember the way we do it, we just find it. But if you have a in a product a space, that can be done much, much easier. Okay, so this is the uh, this theorem, which is going to be very important. Okay, so what's going to be this uh, theorem about? So suppose you have a you have this one of these uh, uh, orthonormal bases. Now you know it. An orthonormal basis means uh, you have a set of vectors. They are two by two uh, orthogonal, and they uh, and they are unit vectors. So you know that in that case, each vector into the vector space is going to be a linear combination of the basis vectors, and their coefficients are going to be coordinate of the vectors, but we can write those coefficients in terms of the inner product nicely. Look at this one. Very nice theorem. And that would be help us for the okay for the next result. And that's it. If B is equal to B is equal to the V1, V2 up to the Vn. Okay, suppose is an 
is an orthonormal. Okay, orthonormal basis for the inner product space or an inner product, inner product space V. Okay, then you know that each vector can be written as a linear combination of these, okay? Uh, then, then for each vector, let's say W, for each vector uh, W, okay, for each vector W in, in the winner product space, okay, uh, we are going to have, we call it the, the representation, okay? So we, we have, let's write it down first. You see it's gonna be W. You know that W is gonna be what? It's gonna be C1, V1, C2, V2 up to the C and V. But their coefficients are going to be, you see the coefficient of the first one is, uh, I did it for the proof of the other theorem, is gonna be the product of the W times V1 Okay, times V1, it's like C1, V1. Then the C2, V2, C2, V2 is what? Is W, V2, okay, and the V2. And then you continue. Continue, we get the W times the VN, okay, times the VN. Okay, this is gonna be called, and they call it coordinate representation, okay. And this is going to be the one, and this is going to be called the coordinate. The coordinate uh, representation, representation of W with respect. Okay, with respect to the to the to the B. Respect to the B. Okay, that makes things very easy to, to operate. And the proof is clear, proof is just one line. Okay, so if you want to prove it, you know that this is going to be a basis. Okay, so W is a linear combination. Okay, this is it, suppose. Suppose W is the linear combination C1, V1, C2, V2 up to the CN, VN. And remember they are two by two orthogonal. Okay, if this is gonna be the case, it's just what we are going to do, just multiply, just take one of these. So if this is gonna be the case, then multiply W, multiply by, let's say VJ. Okay, if you multiply by VJ, what's gonna be the result? This is gonna be C1, V1, C2, V2, and somewhere CJ or CI, doesn't matter. Okay, somewhere it's a CJ, VJ, and then you continue to get the C and VN and the VJ. Okay, when you expand it, it's linear, you can do it. So it's gonna be C1, V1, VJ, and the C2, V2, VJ. Okay, up, okay, somewhere we get the, okay, uh, somewhere over here we get the CJ, you get a CJ, VJ, VJ, and then you continue to get to the CN, VN, okay, VJ. You know that all of them are orthogonal, so this is gonna be zero. This is gonna be zero, all of them would be zero, except vj vj this is just the norm of the vector which is one so this would be equal to the cj so this is the coefficients are going to be w and the vj for j equal to one two three up to the up to the end very nice observation okay very nice observation and very uh, very useful.
okay? Very useful to know that this is uh, going to be uh, the case uh, that uh, we are going to have. Okay, I quickly give you one uh, example. Okay, we give you one and we ask you to do it for us. Okay, so uh, this is the advantage of the orthonormal basis. If you have an orthonormal basis, these coefficients are very popular. It depends on the, on the functions that you're going to use. Uh, we call it the, you know, we call them Fourier coefficients. Uh, if you continue taking courses like differential equation one, uh, okay, in future, uh, when we go to the space of the integrable function, and they are gonna be related to the, okay, some series of the sine and the cosine, then we call it Fourier transform. Okay, let's give you one, the way you are going to, you may be asked to just uh, do it for us. Okay, and so you have uh, some in your book, but I give you this one, which is a little bit different. Okay, so example, I put each one of them notice on the, the review that we have. So let's see one, to, where we want you to do it. Remember, I already proved that uh, this is going to be, suppose, there you are, suppose, I'm going to space, uh, work with the function space. Uh, suppose uh, S is, let's say S is a subspace of, is a subspace of continuous function okay, on the closed interval of negative pi and pi, okay, with the basis, okay, with the basis, this is the basis that we already proved, that's a base one cosine of x and the sine x, okay, this is going to be the case, so what I would like you to do is, would like you, this is just a base, it's not the orthonormal one. So they ask you to convert. Okay, convert uh, this base, convert this uh, to, an, to an orthonormal, orthonormal, okay, or orthonormal basis orthonormal basis with respect to the, this inner product, with respect to the, okay, to the inner product, the inner product, as usual for the function, inner product F times G, if you like, is equal to the one over pi, integral from negative pi to pi, f of x, g of x, and d of x. We know how to do it, we just normalize it. If the norm of these vectors are not going to be equal to one, but this is what they want. They want to that then express. Okay, express or represent. f of x equal to the sine square of x half okay, in S, uh, okay, as a, in coordinate views or as a linear, as a linear combination, linear combinations, okay, linear combination of uh, orthonormal basis function, orthonormal basis function. Just the representation that I just approve for you. Okay. So we already proved that this is a, okay, it's an orthogonal. We proved that this is the, an orthogonal set, remember? We proved that one, we just check to see if it's going to be orthonormal. So the solution is going to be, we note that Note that this set, the set of one cosine of x, sine x is just an orthonormal, orthogonal, orthogonal, 
is the orthogonal set. We already proved that. So we just make sure that this is uh, going to be uh, okay. Uh, we check to see if this is uh, going to be, if they are unit vectors, okay? So uh, also, you check the norm. Remember the norm of the, the norm of the vector over here is going to be what? And the norm of vector one is going to be simply one over pi integral from negative pi to pi. And this is just a one squared and dx. You know, if you integrate it, this is going to be equal to two because uh, that given integral is going to be x from, you see this is going to be one over pi times x from negative pi to pi. So that give you two pi over pi, which is equal to two. So you have to normalize it. So what we're going to do is we are going to suppose, for example, g1 of x is going to be equal to, we normalize it as, Okay, so that is, uh, sorry, that is, that's a norm a square, remember? Uh, one dot one or F dot one. Okay, so the norm of the F, so the norm of the first vector, if you like, uh, so the norm of the first vector is going to be equal to the radical two. So we change this first one into the one over radical two one. Okay, we normalize it. You know that if you have a vector, you see if your vector is V, if you divide it by the norm of the V, this vector is normalized, means you need the norm of the vector V is equal to one. Okay, so the norm is radical two, you divide it, that give one over, one over radical two. Okay, we do the same thing for the cosine, it's a cosine, the norm of the cosine squared, is going to be one over pi integral from negative pi to pi a cosine a square of x dx. We operate this one before that's going to be equal to the one. So in this case, you are not going to change it. G2x is just, uh, it's going to be one over radical one. Okay, and uh, this is the same thing, cosine x. So it's already normalized. Okay, and it's the same for the sine. The norm of the sine square of x, sine x norm squared, is gonna be the same thing, it's gonna be one over pi, integral from negative pi to pi, sine square of x dx, which is one. So the G3 is going to be again the same thing. Okay, that give you, that give you the, okay, the sine. Okay, so your orthonormal basis is going to be, okay, this is it. I just normalize it in the situation that we have. This is very classic. Just wanted to see it, but in the, the case that we have, the vectors are just gonna be in the vector space. So this is a little bit uh, different. Uh, so now this is gonna be the space we have. So, you are going to have, uh, you change the one into the one over uh, radical two. Okay, one over radical two. And then the other parts are going to be the same. Cosine X, uh, sine X. Okay, so this is going to be your, uh, okay, is the, okay, is uh, going to be an orthonormal, orthonormal, normal set. On the normal set, remember that's a G1, a G2, G3. Uh, now they ask you to find, uh, okay, so we have a function, you have a function, your function is F of X equal to what? F of X equal to the sine S square of the X half. And you want to write it down as a linear combination. So it's going to be your F of X is going to be equal to Remember those linear combination they're going to have. Uh, generally, uh, the vectors are going to be, you see, this is it. It's a C1 and G1 plus C2, G2, 
plus uh, C3, G3, okay? And we know these coefficients that you're going to find. So what's going to be the C1? C1 is the product of the F and the G1. Okay, F and the G1. Uh, so F is uh, the sine squared, sine X squared of the X half and the G1 is just simply one over radical two. And if you go to those integral is one over pi, negative pi to pi. And this is going to be one over radical two. Okay, the sine is square of X half. A dx, I'll give you a better example later. You know, if you, if you simplify it so that C1 would be one over radical two. Okay, you know, you can, it would be too much for the sine square, but it's nice to know it. Okay, and the, and the C2 is going to be F and G2. Okay, F and G2, if you operate it, that give a negative half. And the C3 is going to be F and G3. Okay, and these are going to be not easy integral to find. You just take it as a, as an example. Okay, so basically what you have is going to be, so the expansion of the sine square of x half is going to be simply one half, uh, one over a radical two g1. Okay, g1 minus one half of uh, g2. And if you substitute, remember the G1 was a radical one over radical two, and the G2 was simply a cosine of X. And if you put them together, you get something similar, something uh, uh, known. This is what I wanted to see, is a one half minus one half cosine. Remember this is the formula that you know it, half angle formula give you one minus cosine X over two. And you knew it at the first, at the beginning. Okay, so that was a unique uh, question. New example that I want to show you that, you know, that this concept is, is working to get these numbers. So that was just a, a confirmation that I did show that with this idea, I can expand the, the sine squared Okay, just give you a half of angle, half angle formula that you have. Okay, so let's get to the to the Quran really. It's it's a very, very dense uh, uh, part or subject really. We can go on forever, but uh, we just wanted to give an idea in this course. Then, if you like, in future, uh, you may go on and continue. So uh, what we are going to do is uh, the question. The main question of this section is, uh, if you are in the inner product space, now you know that you can find, uh, okay, if you find an orthonormal basis, it's very good for you. So the question is, if I give you a vector space, okay, in a product space, how are you going to find one of these orthonormal set bars, okay? There are different ways to do it. I just briefly shrink one of them for you to finish this uh, course with this, you know, with this idea. There is a, a procedure. This procedure was proved by two great mathematicians. One of them is a Danish, the other one is German. And so we call them Gram-Schmidt orthogonization procedure, process. It will do quite a lot. So what I do is, I just briefly give you a short form of this one so that you know it in future. If you need it, you can you can go back and have a look at it. And that would be a very good place to finish this type of type of arguments. Okay. So there are some in between definitions. I'm going to cut them because I don't need them or we don't need it. We just need the, the procedure. It's a great procedure, it can be done interactively and it's a quite a nice one. Okay, so the question is if, you know that, if I give you, you start with the basis, 
because your case is finite dimensional. So if your vector space is finite dimensional with dimension n, so this means there is a basis. Your difficulty is going to be, you want to make this basis to be orthogonal. So this means any two vectors to be uh, orthogonal to each other. And then each vector must be unit vectors. Unit vector case is easy because you find the norm of the vectors and divide each vector by its norm. So that procedure of orthogonality is going to be the case. We're going to use something we call orthogonal projection. If you have done calculus three, you probably have seen it over there. But what I do is I just put them together without any name and show you that, uh, that procedure. And uh, we just work on some examples so that you know we know it. If you need more details, or if you would like to see it in more uh, general format, you can have a look at it yourself. But uh, for this course, this is what we need. And we are not going to drop anything, but we just do it quickly so that we'll be able to, to get some examples on this one, okay? So this uh, procedure me is going to be called by the name of the people. Uh, this is it, true mathematician, Graham, Danish, and Schmidt. Okay, that's going to be, I just make sure you get the name right. That's it, they call it Graham Schmidt uh, Orthogonizations. Uh, ortho, you know, ortho normalization. Means finding those vectors. Ortho normalization. Okay, process. That's it. Okay, so the idea is how are you going to find, how are you going to find an orthonormal basis for the given vector space, but given inner product space, okay? So this procedure is going to be called, uh, okay, this procedure is going to be called a Graham Schmidt uh, procedure, okay? So, uh, this is it. This procedure is, uh, so uh, what we would like to do is if, uh, if, uh, let's say, uh, if a, if a, uh, okay, if an inner product, a space, it can be done easily in, R2, R3, they usually discuss it over there, you know, in most of the linear algebra book. But it's all the same, we can do it in inner product space. If an inner product space uh, V is uh, given with, of course, the dimension of V is equal to the N. Okay dimension is equal to the n. Uh, okay, so uh, in order to find, okay, in order, order, to construct or to find, to find an order, order normal basis for V, okay, if you want to find it, this is how we're going to do it. Step one, we start with them, any basis you have. Okay, so we are going to begin, okay, begin with a basis, okay, begin with the, with the basis basis for the, begin with the basis for the inner product space, for the inner product space V. Since it's a finite dimensional, you can find one. Okay, so it's possible to find one. We're going to call this one B. Okay, that's the first procedure. Step two, 
You have to change this one into the orthogonal. Okay, uh, this is going to be the case, convert. Okay, convert the given. Basis, convert the given basis to an orthogonal. Orthogonal basis. That's a step one. Step three is easy. You normalize it. Normalize. Divide each vector by its norm. Normalize. Okay, normalize each vector. Normalize each vector to form. Okay, to form an orthonormal. Orthonormal. Orthonormal basis. Okay, that's the, that's the step. Now, the problem is how we're going to form a, uh, okay, how we're going to form uh, the orthonormal, uh, orthogonal, uh, orthogonal basis. Because you start with the vector V, then you have to find the vector that's going to be orthogonal to the V, okay? So this theorem would give you the, the steps, the procedure that we're going to do. Okay, so this uh, the theorem is step one. So you start with the given basis, okay? So uh, let B to B, you have to find this one, and that would be given to you. V1, V2 in the problem, that would be given. Let uh, B a uh, given vector, given basis, given basis, for the vector space, where the inner product space V. Okay, that's going to be the one. That would be given. Then your job is to replace these vectors by orthogonal one. So how are going to do it? This is it. You are going to let B prime. This is the one that you're going to construct. It's going to be equal to the W1, W2, up to the WN. Okay, now, where these W's are coming. Let's see, I'll do a couple of them. You see, we take the w, we take the W1 to be equal to the V1. Okay, we got to the V1. Then remember, you have the V2. So what we are going to do, we are going to find the, uh, okay, the image of the V1 on the V2, if you like, or the shadow the shadow of the V1 on the on the V2 to get to the, okay, to get to the to the other uh, other parts. I'll show you how, how we are going to do it. Let's write it down. So this is going to be the W2. The W2 is going to be the V2 minus the shadow. I'm going to show you what does it mean. So this is going to be Okay, a scalar multiple of the W1. So what's going to be this a scalar multiple? This is going to be V2, the product of the V2 and the W1. Okay, product of V2 and the W1. And divided by the, the norm. Okay, the norm of the W1 squared. Okay, times it by W1. This is going to be the, the second vector that you are you are going to have. And the, the procedure that you have, we use this type of uh, procedure and the vectors in, in R3 in calculus, uh, okay, calculus uh, three. Let me just uh, bring my notes so that they're to show you. You see, this is uh, the, the procedure that uh, you are going to have. You see, if uh, in calculus, uh, calculus three, or in general, 
you see if you have two vectors, if this is going to be the V1, and this is going to be the V2. Then you can have, a, we call it orthogonal projection, you see. If you get a shadow of the, if you consider the image of the V2 on the V1 over here, okay, here. This, this one over here, we call it the, you know, the, the image, or we call it an orthogonal, orthogonal projection. This vector is going to be, this vector is going to be, a, because it's going to be kind of, you know, this vector is going to be kind of parallel to the V1. So this must be a scalar multiple of the V1 over here. And there is going to be left over here. So that's exactly what would happen to this one. This is the first one, the V1, you get the W1. So what we did over here, we just get the, get the image of the W1 uh, on the image. Okay, this uh, vector is going to be the, okay, image of the V1 over the W1, and then we, we continue to get to the, to the next one. So that would be W2. We repeat this one again, you see? We get to the W3. So the W3 would be V3 minus, now you are going to change this one into the what? It's going to be minus. This must be a scalar multiple of the, of the V2. So we get, the, we get the previous one, which is the V2, W1 over the norm of the W1 squared W1, okay, now minus the next one. The next one is going to be W2. So uh, this is going to be a V3, W2, over the norm of the W2, then the W2. And then you continue. You see, for each part, you go back, you see, you take, you replace it. You start with the V1, you form this one, then uh, you replace it by the W2 and the continue because this is going to be, this part is like the like the W2 that you did. So if you want to go to the V4, so you start with the, you see, we start with the V4, then the W1, W2, W3, etc. to get to the, to get to the, to the, to the last part. Okay, uh, so, if you get these, uh, okay, then uh, then the, these W1, W2 to WN, it can be proved that they are going to be, uh, okay. So B prime is going to be uh, an orthogonal set, an ortho, okay, is going to be orthogonal set. Okay, then you, so that's gonna be a step two. A step three, you just, uh, okay, you just uh, normalize this. Okay, in a step three, uh, what you do is you are going to let UI to be, uh, for example, WI over the norm of the WI. Okay, for I equal to the one, two, up to the end, and then, okay, then this new one, V double prime, which is going to be U1, U2, up to the UN, is going to be, is an orthonormal, orthonormal basis. Okay, orthonormal basis, for the vector space, for the inner products of space B. Okay, it can be, all of them can be nice to prove. Inductively, you can prove that this is gonna be the norm. This is gonna be the, the result. Of course, the procedure uh, is not easy when the dimension is gonna be uh, much higher. Okay, it's not easy to be done. There are softwares that we can do it, but we just want to get just a couple of, you know, lower dimension. Just make sure you understand it, but otherwise, the existence of this procedure is going to be enough for most of the most of the time. Okay, so I just give a couple of uh, examples, and then uh, that's it. 
and we give you some on the on the review then i will have another recording for you just going over those uh, new parts too okay uh, so you can read it in more details from your book but this is where we are going to end up and we would like you to be able to do it for us okay we give you one question on the final from the gram schmidt okay so this is it i put a couple of them in your okay procedure that we have the review and then we do it uh, you know the procedure is easy you just the formula you just substitute apply the the gram schmidt so i can try to make it make it short but you got the general idea. So we would like you to use the gram schmidt okay? This is going to be the case for the name. There is no H here, okay? gram schmidt okay? Uh, we'd like you to use that uh, procedure for the following, uh, following vectors, okay? Uh, that's it. Process. Uh, okay, process to find a. Okay. To the. To the basis. The basis is B equal to. B is equal to the one one. Uh, zero one. Okay, zero one uh, for for R two. Okay, the classic the classic R two, if you like. That's uh, that's going to be the one. So it's just uh, two vectors. It's going to be easy. Now we are interested in two or three to be able to find these vectors for us. Okay. So this is how we're going to do it. So step one is already given to you, okay? This is a step one. You have the V is got one, one, and this is going to be zero, one. Okay, so this is what you call it. Okay, you call it the V1 and the, and the V2. Okay, this is given. So what we'd like to do, we would like to go with the uh, the procedure for the process uh, step two for the step two we'd like to find what is going to be b prime okay the b prime is w1 and the w2 so we are going to find it the w1 is equal to the v1 which is going to be equal to the one one so we have the w1 is one one Okay, this is going to be W1. Then we go on to get the to get the W2. So what's going to be the W2? The W2 is equal to the V2 minus that shadow that we talk about it. Okay, this is it. it. Is going to be minus minus the inner product of the V2. Okay, V2 and the W1. Okay, divided by, divided by the norm of the W1 squared times the W1. Is the, is the image of the V2 on the W1, on the W1. Okay, so we have to find these uh, numbers and just uh, come back and uh, take care of it. Okay, so one by one. So this is just the usual inner product between the V2 and the, what is the V2? V2 is zero one dot W, which is one one. You know that this is going to be what? This is going to be zero, zero plus one is equal to, is equal to one. Okay, it's going to be equal to one. We find the norm of the W2, the norm of the W1 is squared is going to be the product w1 dot w1 okay in this case this is going to be one okay let's see that is going to be 
divided by, did I miss anything over here? Uh, sorry, this is going to be W1, W31, it's going to be 1, 1 plus 1, okay, in a product. 1 and 1, that give you, that give you 2. Okay, that give you 2, so we come, go back. So the W2 is equal to, this is it. W2 is equal to the V2. And V2 is 0, 1. When we 0, 1 minus, the top is equal to the 1, and this is equal to the 2, times the W1, and the W1 is 1, 1. Okay, so this is going to be equal to the 0, 1, okay, is going to be equal to the, uh, just, you know, I just multiply this negative 1 inside, so that give a negative half and the negative half. So if you add them together, that give you a negative half and the, and the one half. So this is going to be the W2. Okay, so the W2 is negative half and one half. This is going to be W2. Okay, since it's a two dimensional, so that would be enough. We get the prime, which is going to be W1 and the uh, W2. Okay, so the next step, you have to normalize this. Okay, you have to divide them by the norms uh, so that you'll be able to now to get those numbers. Okay, so the step three. Step three is, you are going to introduce those U. So the U1 is going to be equal to the W1 divided by the norm of the W1 to normalize it. Okay, so that's going to be the one. Norm of the W1 is equal to the two. So this is going to be one half times the W1, which is a one one. So that gives you one half and the one half. This is going to be your U1. Okay, then we get the U2. U2 is equal to the W2. Okay, over the norm of the W2. So we get this one. So the W2 is, W2 is a negative half and the half. So the norm of the W2 Okay, this is going to be what is the square root of a quarter plus a quarter here. Okay, so that give you what? Uh, that give you uh, the one, uh, that's going to be two four, which is going to be one half. So this is going to be radical two over two. Radical two over two, so we go back. So the U2 is going to be equal to the one over radical two over two times the W2 if you like. So that give you two over radical two, two over radical two times the W2, which is a negative half and one half. If you multiply inside, so the U2 is going to be a negative one over radical two and this is going to be one over radical two. And so U2 is a negative radical two over two and the radical two over two, okay? So eventually this is going to be the basis. The basis is going to be U1 and U2 with this information that we, we talk about it, okay? and. Uh, so the U1, so this is going to be, this is it. So this is the one half and the one half, comma, and this is going to be negative radical two, negative radical two and radical radical two. So this is going to be, is an uh, orthonormal, orthonormal basis, basis for, for R2. You see, I just give you a short one, then in the review, I give you one, we need at least one with the, with the three vectors really to just keep going and get a, a couple of more 
more steps to get these uh, these vectors. Okay, uh, so this is where we're going to end up. Uh, so I told you we just summarized to get the 6-2 and the 6-3. I select uh, some of the problems of these uh, three sections, which is going to be the one that we are interested in. I posted for you, you can do it, you know, if you want to get practice, but I put them, all of them in the, in our review that we are going to have, okay? So I post the review uh, and I will make a recording next week for you, just going through some of the review. I put, you know, I post, I post the solution for that review for you by the, by Monday, if you like, or over the weekend. So I start working on it. If you have any question, just let me know. And otherwise uh, we are going to have the final on Wednesday, okay? I try to put all your points together uh, so that we have uh, no difficulty of anything missing. Just uh, let me know, okay? So if you need anything, just uh, email me. So wait for that review so that you know that what type of problems we are going to be interested from this procedure. As I told you, if you want to continue taking a linear algebra course, this is just the beginning. And this is start from uh, inner product space because this is finite dimensional. You take it in inter, in uh, infinite dimensional, most of these procedures are going to be the same over there and you get the result. Okay, that's it. Good luck. Then uh, see you on Wednesday. If you need anything, just email me. Okay, have a good night. Bye-bye.